Hey, it's me. If I sing, will you sing with me? I love singing with you. Oh, you're the best poo poo. I love you. Shalom, shalom. It's Monica. How are y'all doing? It's been a while since I've made a video. I've actually made several videos and just did not post them. Um, but we're starting to get near the end of the growing season. So I figured I would show you guys what I am about to do because I need to get a couple more things in the ground. I want to have some more lettuce before the season completely comes to an end. Um, and just like to give you a little bit of an update. I notice not a lot of people watch my videos about gardening. They more so watch my videos about faith and truth, but gardening is faith and truth. So I'm going to continue to make my little gardening videos. Hopefully they'll get better with time. But for now, like I said, this is my first year doing this and it's really just to inspire people to do the best they can with the little itty bitty spaces that they have. Just get started. So if two or three people watch it, maybe those two or three people will get started if they haven't already get started and who knows what will happen next year. But anyway, I'm getting ready to put some seeds, get some seeds started in my little seed starting station. I'll show you guys all that, show you guys what's happening in the garden, talk to you a little bit about what my plans are, um, and we will move on. All right. So right now I'm planning on getting some seeds started. I was trying to decide what seeds I'm going to start. I'm pretty sure that I'm very late with getting my seeds started, but lettuce sprouts very, very quickly and grows very, very quickly. It is the end of August going into September. Uh, temperatures have dropped back down to the 70s, so I think lettuce will do good um, here. So here I have some Grand Rapids leaf lettuce that I was going to plant. As you can see, I got this from Walmart. Look at that. 20 cents for a pack of seeds. Hopefully these will germinate well. I don't know what 20 cent seeds are going to be like, but they may be fantastic. Who knows? They're not organic, but I'm going to grow them organically without using any pesticides or fungicides or any of that kind of stuff. Um... I've got some mustard, spinach, tender greens. I'm going to go ahead and plant some more of those and hope that I get a decent yield before the weather gets too darn cold. I've got this gourmet lettuce blend, which I planted um, at the beginning of the season in spring. And it includes Grand Rapids, which is what I just showed you, the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce. It's uh, something called salad bowl red salad bowl, oak leaf, and flame lettuce. Some of these lettuces I was not too excited about, um, but whatever, I'll do better next year. As you can see, these, you can plant them April and June or August through September, and it says you can sow them outside in September, so if I start them now, uh, they should be ready to go into the ground. Let's see about these here. The mustard greens, see these are different. They don't give you the nice, fancy information on the back. Um, yeah, I don't even have patience for these and what they say on the back. If it doesn't have a picture, then I'm pretty much done. This one has a picture. Let's see. Zone 3, Zone 4. I guess based on this, since I'm in Illinois, I'd be Zone 3. It says April and June. That's it? That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, these will plant just fine. Um, and for the last lettuce, I've got some black seeded Simpson lettuce. Yay. I'm really excited about the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce and the black seeded Simpson lettuce. I think they're going to be hardier lettuces. I like my lettuce a little bit. Uh, like I like good texture. I like it very crunchy. And then, of course, these are the only greens I have. 
hopefully they'll grow and I'll actually get some germination. This is the little flat that I'm going to grow them in. I've already tried to decide, you know, what I want here. These can have uh, four little sections. I had purchased plants from the nursery or from the home center before. I just popped the plants out um, and put them in the garden. And then I washed these with dishwashing, soap, and bleach to try and kill any kind of, you know, disease that might spread. I did the same with the flat. Um, these had lettuce in them. They're just three compartment containers. So I've got four of those. And then I've got four of these four um, compartment containers. So I'm going to do the Grand Rapids in two of the four compartment containers. So that should give me eight plants. The Black Seeded Simpson, I should get eight plants. The Gourmet Lettuce, I should get six and then the spinach mustard greens, I should get six. And actually with the spinach mustard greens, I don't think I'm going to do six of those because that's just too many for greens. So I might just do one of these and then do this three of those. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyway, what I'm putting them in to get them started is going to be this Jiffy Natural and Organic Seed Starting Mix. Um, I don't know much about seed starting mixes, but so far this has been my favorite. Um, I tried another one before, um, but the Jiffy, I don't know. They seem to have pretty good products. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I have a little bit more of what I got last time and use. Yep. So that's it. Then once I get all those started, I'm going to put them underneath my grow lights. This is my little germination station. As I call it, I only have two lights now. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to be getting two more lights cause I want to do some indoor, um, greens, so like micro greens over the winter time, so I can still be growing uh, while the snow is falling. Right now, I'm using a lot of uh, storage space there, as you can see, so I'll have to change things. Please forgive the paper bags on the bottom. I did that because my poo poo bear, my baby Maddie, likes to get up there, and if I don't have something solid there, he can't really enjoy it. So, I found a way of taking paper bags and kind of weaving it through. The rungs so that he can get up there and be with me while I'm in the kitchen. Uh, but it's a nice storage space. I plan on getting some more like S hooks, which are like hooks like this. But I want to get some big ones so I can start hanging things off the side of the rack. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some more lights and I'm going to grow. I will be lowering these lights down. So that they're, you know, about an inch or two above the top of the soil from the plants. And I'll just keep on adjusting them as the plants get larger until they're ready to go outside. So that is my station. It's just, you know, like a regular rack, um, four feet across so that it can handle the four foot lights. The lights are just like regular shop lights with specific types of bulbs that imitate outdoor light. And they do a really good job of growing. I taped some <laughs> aluminum foil to the back of the wall just to help with reflection. And I will probably take some of the, the aluminum foil and I drape them over the top of this and I bring it down and cover the front of this so that all the light reflects back to the plants and I get the most um, maximum amount of light exposure to the seedlings so that they don't get leggy. And then I'm going to get those outside. All right, let's go see what's going on in the actual garden. All right, y'all. The garden has taken some neglect over the past few weeks. I have not been paying attention to it the way I need to, which is very bad. I had a squirrel who came and started attacking my garden. I became very discouraged because I couldn't keep the squirrel out of the garden. And in order to keep my sanity um, about the squirrel, I just kind of stopped paying attention to the garden and coming out here because I was fighting the squirrel. I tried to beat the squirrel with a broom. I had to pray and repent about trying to hurt the squirrel. I lost the broom to the downstairs neighbor's porch. I realized that it was bringing out the worst in me. So I stepped away from the garden for a while. Um, as you can see, things got dry, things got disease. My poor little cherry tomato plant has taken quite a bit of abuse. As you can see, I had to get out here today, cut off a bunch of the bottom leaves. Thank goodness it's towards the end of the season and everything's going to start coming out because I'm very disappointed in 
what's happened here but as you guys can see I've gotten quite a bit of production compared to before I've got tomatoes all over this thing look there's one starting to blush right there so I'm still getting some redness I just need to get out here and pay more attention look how tall that is that's almost as tall as the eight foot furring strip so I'm glad I went and changed out those strips the peas are officially gone I pulled those out today and that's gonna be one of the areas where I plant um, lettuce the beans I'm gonna be honest I never ate any of these beans I did not know what to do with beans so I think I'm gonna pull these beans out and I'm gonna utilize the space for lettuce um, it is a nice shaded area that the squirrel is getting under and doing a lot of digging so I think it's time just to pull those out it's not looking good anyway the types of beans that I got were not the types of beans that I was expecting. They kind of freaked me out. I don't know. I just got to get better with, you know, like trying new things. Ooh, there's a lot of pollinators out here nowadays, so the bees are going crazy. Here go my pepper plants. Pepper plants are doing well. I've got a huge cicada in there. Can you see him? Hold on. I'm going to zoom in. I don't want to get too close and disturb him. See him? He's been out here chilling all morning. I told him he's welcome to stay. <laughs> but anyway let me see I don't want to get too close and like scare him my yellow pepper plant in the back can you guys see there look I have two more peppers that came onto that plant it looks like there's another one growing up there so my pepper plants now that the temperature starting to drop are doing very well um, the pepper plant that the cicada is on it has not put on any other fruit it still has the three original fruit that it had for the red pepper plant I tried to move them. I don't know if they're doing good or not. I can't tell. But it definitely is not budding anymore. And it's not putting on any other fruits. So I think that that plant is pretty much going to be gone. I just want to leave those fruits on there and see if they turn red. I'll do some more research on that. Um, the marigold and the carrot bed, as you can see, has just become completely overgrown. I can barely tell where the carrots and the marigolds begin and end. Um, I don't want to screw with the marigolds and carrots can stay in the ground for a long time you don't have to pull them but I don't see any carrots poking out of the ground so I don't know if the carrots were successful at all I'm having a feeling they weren't I did hear that carrot tops are edible so I don't know I think I just need more space but I gave it a try I'm not too disappointed um, the basil of course that had bolted a long time ago I left that out to, so the flowers could attract pollinators which they absolutely did I've got pollinators galore out here now so much so I'm a little scared to come garden because there's bees everywhere but it is what it is the tender greens are gone I pulled those out I'm gonna go ahead and start getting that ready for lettuce um, this one that the basil's in I'm gonna pull the rest of the plants out I'm gonna prepare that for lettuce the green pepper plant that was not producing previously is producing like crazy now. It's actually my healthiest pepper plant, and it was the most unhealthy to begin with. Remember, I pulled almost all the leaves off, and I was just hoping it grew leaves. Well, now let me show you. I've got one pepper there. I've got a pepper growing above it. There's a pepper growing right there. i got a pepper growing in the back. So this thing is putting on peppers like crazy suddenly and oh there's more peppers in there like my goodness there's so many little baby peppers see them so this thing is like really starting to produce now a lot oh there's one in there too wow that's not so this plant has just just started like growing peppers like crazy i have to say at first i was like oh i'm really bad at peppers but i think i enjoy growing peppers so next year i really want to find more space and pepper it up different kinds of peppers too not just bell peppers i want to do some hot peppers and really enjoy the growing anyway let's get to the second tomato plant i purchased later in the season here we go here as you can see this pepper plant has taken some darn abuse it has gotten very dry from me not watering it see how the dry leaves Ugh, I just didn't do good the squirrel started coming shortly after I put this in the ground and I just started neglecting the garden after that so you know things get real but 
I want to show y'all that I'm actually getting tomato production off of this. And I'm very excited to see if these will get big enough and get red. So I'm going to squat down here. You guys see all those tomatoes? Get out of here. Look at that. One, two, three. And these are going to be larger tomatoes. These are supposed to be red beefsteak tomatoes. So I have three down there. As I come up a little bit higher. Oh, wow. Let's try and move this out of here for a second. I come up a little bit higher. Here we go. I got one, two. So I got two right there. So that's a total of five tomatoes on this plant that I've got so far. And we'll see what happens. But that's pretty good. Five tomatoes. Hopefully the squirrel won't come and attack those. Last but not least are the zucchinis. And I was having some issues with the zucchinis. All the flowers kept on falling off of the zucchinis. But I'm finally starting to get some production. Now the zucchini, um, I don't know if you guys can see, it has mildew. So you can see the mildew on it. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I believe I bought the plant diseased. But you can see each one of those leaves. The mildew is really all over those leaves and you can see the difference between like a semi-decent leaf the mildew starting to take over that one and the ones that actually have the powdery mildew all over it so you know it's just a shame that that happened but it's still producing and it is what it is you know it is what it is and these were organic seedlings when I started them but let's get in here check it out this thing is really starting to be prolific so i'm starting to be able to grow zucchinis look at that one that's almost like a full size zucchini there i am really excited zucchinis it turns out grows so fast so i've got another one right there i believe it's getting some good pollination i've been seeing the bees out here buzzing around like crazy look, i've got another one right there that's starting to grow beautiful there's a couple in there that the flowers have already started like dying out on them. They're not doing so well, unfortunately. Um, I got a bunch of male flowers on here, but I've got a female, another little baby female. See it right there? And the flower on the end of that one doesn't look like it's died out. So I'm excited about that. It looks like I'll have at least one, two, three, four. Oh, there's another girl right there, another female with a good flower head on top that one hasn't died out so i'm actually really enjoying growing the zucchini even though i do have powdery mildew on this one and like i said i think i bought it that way from home depot it didn't look so great when i got it i kind of nursed it back to health a little bit but i think that it was already experiencing some issues you can see i've got some flowers some zucchini flowers just kind of hanging out down there now those flowers it turns out are edible but I don't know how to eat them so I haven't been eating them I've just been throwing them away I've been seeing them in all the stores um, but I'm just excited to be getting any zucchini production that zucchini down there the big one I'm guessing in one to two days I should be able to pluck that bad boy and eat them when I was at the store today they were selling them that size but I know they get bigger than that so I want mine to be a little bit bigger. And so I'm going to give it a chance to do that. There's a failed one underneath that one. I don't know if you guys can see the failed one. But when I pull that one, we'll see if I can get that failed one out of there as well. And just give the plant all the energy it needs to work on the good ones. So that's going. what's going on with the garden. The zucchinis are doing very well. The pepper plants, two of them are steadily putting out new peppers. One of them is not. I'm just leaving it going so that the peppers on it mature. My cherry tomato plant looks horrible, but I have a lot of production on it, so I'm just going to continue to try and get out of here and um, pay the garden attention again. The squirrel seems to maybe have gotten a little bit bored with coming by here. I don't know but that's it that's all I've got so when it comes to my first year garden I've had a lot of successes I've had a lot of failures 
At first I thought that everything was diseased and everything was doing horribly. And then it turned out everything was just fine and it wasn't diseased. And then by the end there is disease and there is mildew. And I am having issues. And you know what? Even with the disease and the mildew and the issues, I'm still getting production. I think the worst thing that happened this year in my growing, I have to be honest, is the squirrel. <laughs> it wasn't just one. It was a family of them. I have a family of squirrels that live in a tree right outside of my balcony. And once one found out about the garden, they all started coming. They started eating my tomatoes, digging, burying their nuts. It was a mess. They're eating the beans. There's nothing I can do about it, you know? It is what it is. It's part of gardening. And, you know, I'm over it now. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of my growing season. Today I took a walk and I found a community garden in my neighborhood. Not like far away somewhere where I have to travel in a car several towns away. Like right near me i every shabbat walk and i walk past this area like constantly and didn't even notice there was a community garden there just saw it for the first time today people are growing so much food back there there's so much zucchini squash peppers tomatoes it was amazing to see how much food people are growing out there there were sunflowers and corn just corn as tall as the building it was next to it was very amazing to get back there and see how much food is being grown in that space. And there were plots that were not purchased yet. So I am going to go out there next year and see if I can get some plots instead of going to the plots that I was looking at before. Because those were several towns away. These plots are much, much, much closer. Like I could literally pack like a little camping or a hiking bag and walk over there with my stuff. I'll probably still drive over there, of course. But I got a chance to see different growing methods. I'm going to tell people in this area took things a little bit more serious than in the other community gardens I went to. There was some very amazing uh, trellising and staking. You can tell that the people in this garden by me are a little bit more serious as far as their growing goes. I mean, it was very very impressive and just you can tell that there was a lot of food being grown by many different people and you could see like some people took the plots and actually took wood out there and created boxes around their plots like growing boxes raised garden beds for their plots so I'm like these people really took this seriously I imagine that maybe some of them are people like me who are just living in apartments don't have a lot of space but are taking gardening very seriously. And they said, well, if I can't do this in my backyard, I'm not, I'm not gonna have any excuses. I'm gonna go take this little plot that I rented and I'm gonna build myself a raised bed out of it. So I may walk back over there a little later on and take a look. Although I was getting strange looks by a guy who kept on following me as if I was gonna steal the food. I don't wanna steal anybody else's food they grew. That would be so wrong. But I guess people do that. I would never, though. I just like to see other people growing their food and get inspiration on how I can be better at doing this. So that's the update, y'all. A lot of successes, a lot of failures, but a lot of motivation to do it again next year and just do it better, do it bigger, do it more successful. But at least I did what I had with the little space that I had and I didn't have take any excuses you know no excuses so next year I'll do better I'll do it bigger and that's it all right if you all have any suggestions comments whatever leave them let me know I hope a couple people watch this. Like I said, I notice people don't watch my gardening videos as much as they watch some of my other videos, hair videos, uh, spirituality videos, which I'm thankful that anybody watches any of my videos, especially mostly that my spirituality videos are getting hits. That is, like things happen exactly the opposite. I thought that the, the gardening videos would do better than the spirituality videos. 
and I really wanted people to get the word. And it was exactly the opposite, which is a beautiful thing, actually. It's, uh, you know, all praise the most high Yahuwah. It, it's amazing that people are really seeking out those types of things um, and just being spiritually minded. But I want y'all to remember that growing food is also being spiritually minded and really focusing the truth because each one of us is a seed and we're planted, you know, what does it say? In, in deep, good soil and shallow, bad soil or on rocky surfaces. Um, and so I think that when you garden, you really get a sense of what that parable means. And in the scriptures, Messiah pretty much spoke in parables and almost all of his parables revolved around gardening. And I think that lets us know exactly how important gardening is to our spiritual life. So even if you're just planting some basil or, you know, some herbs in a little garden box in a window that gets good sunlight, plant something, take care of something um, from, from seed to full grown fruition. I think that it really helps us in our spiritual study and our spiritual life and in being grounded and rooted in the word. All right, that's it. Bye y'all, shalom. Mm.